My name is Leslie Schatz, and I've been a mural instructor for many years. I love to paint murals with all ages. Um, and uh, number one, in order, if you're painting with children, you need to have coverings. So make sure you have shirts, old shirts, aprons. Tell everybody to wear old clothes. And the other thing that's very important is the emergency bucket with rags and ready with soap. So those are two things, your coverings and your buckets of water. These small buckets of water are for when we rinse our brushes. Now, there's a little trick with mural painting um, that a lot of people don't know. How do you keep your brush clean where you're not putting black into the yellow? That really is yucky. You uh, quickly end up with mud. Um, so unless you're just doing an entire muddy landscape, which we haven't seen in Saskatchewan for a while, please take this to heart. Okay, say you have three little painters per section. We have our canvas divided in three sections. We have our paints all separated. They're laid out. Three little brushes in each color. Keeps everything separated. Put three, three brushes in green, three brushes in yellow, and three brushes in this orange. In case you're wondering what this paint is, this is all... Uh, freebies, leftover paint from people's houses. It's, uh, you have to use exterior, if possible, acrylic paints. Um, if it is interior, that's okay, but, uh, the exterior will last a bit longer on your canvas. Now, what we do when we're painting these little murals is we have, why we have the three sections is we paint this mural as if it's a song or a story. You have your intro, which basically introduces the audience to the topic that you're going to be painting. So we're going to have a little group of three using those, and they're going to paint the intro. Then we have the body, which is very important. Whoever is painting the body, that's a very important spot. Then we have the conclusion. And that's really important. Now, the conclusion can be interchanged with the intro. And you can talk that over with your group. Many times, um, authors take a conclusion and put it up for the intro and use the intro for the conclusion. It seems to work for some weird reason. So that now that we're all ready, make sure that you have a wide variety of brushes. I use uh, some little tiny ones for later on because there'll be someone there that wants to do details and you have to supply it. The other thing that I do after I load all of these with their three, 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 three all the way through, then when I'm pushing the canvas out, I talk about space. Now, is it going to be a good idea to give Johnny one of these to make him move over? You kind of have to think about it. And what if your grandma's there down on her knees with the little pillows under her knees? She might be having a little bit of trouble. You don't want to bump her, right? So you have to have respect of people's spaces. And when we're in a community together, we also do that in our own community. We respect everybody's space. We don't charge in and get rammy. So that's one of the best things that we can do with our painting. So the song that we're going to learn for our intro, our body, and our conclusion is from a poem that was written by um, Pauline Johnson. She was an amazing Indigenous woman who toured Canada at the beginning of the 20th century, all on her own, all on trains, all across Canada, with her poetry readings, which was amazing and unusual. And one of the songs she poems she wrote was called The Song My Paddle Sings. So I just took it when I was reading her leather bound book. It was like the melody came floating up out of the out of the book. And it sounds like this. West wind blow from your prairie nest, 
Blow from the mountain, blow from the west, the sail is idle, sailor too. Wind from the west, we wait for you. Blow, blow, I've wooed you so, never a favor you bestow. You rock your cradle, the hills between, scorn to notice my white Latin. I stowed the sail, I unshipped the mast, I wooed you long, but my wooing's past. Paddle will lull you into rest. Drowsy wind from the drowsy west, blow, blow from your mountain home, down where the prairie grasses grow. Now roll and slumber your laggard wings, soft as a song my paddle sings, soft as a song my paddle sings. So we take west wind, blow from your prairie nest, blow from the mountain, blow from the west as intro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The sail is idle, sailor too, wind from the west, we wait for you. And then it comes into, blow below, I wooed you so. So this part, the body, you're going to build on that wind. So you, I don't know if you can imagine a big wind painting of clouds and blowing and uh, the little, the little canoe there getting its sail up, going to go really fast now. And then this is, I unship the mast, so you take the everything down, and you you just have it calmly end up floating away. So, but the middle the middle section is going to be a very busy section. So, anyone who wants to take on the body of this song is going to have a bit of work, and we'll we'll translate that for you. We'll all learn the song as we go, and the very intro is just getting your canoe into the water. And, and you're all alone, you got your paddles, you're all alone, maybe you got your dog swimming nearby or something like that, but you're basically all alone in that canoe. And this is a story of you taking that canoe, hooking up a little sail in there for a little while till the wind gets too much, and then taking the sail down and just sailing on, and then maybe you'll stop and have some food, a picnic or something like that. So you can think about that in your conclusion. So the conclusion and the intro are kind of neat. They're kind of alike because both of them don't have the sail. But the middle one, boy, this, this is a real rocky one. You've got some rough water and you got your sail and you're going for it. So you might have sort of a little worried look on your face for a while. But that's how we're going to paint this mural. Now we're going to go meet the canvas and take it outside because when we're painting an actual... Uh, mural, it's really fun to work outside because there's less mess in your library. I'm sure the librarians will be happy. So we have all of these buckets. These will be the water buckets. I'll just take out one and I'll just take out one of these and then we will head outdoors and you can meet the beautiful canvas that history used once the buffalo were gone. We used it for all kinds of things. Instead of having teepees with hides, all of a sudden there were teepees made of canvas. Come on out. And we have to have some plastic down. And uh, yeah. We've got a, a little bit of a windy day today. Um, these murals are really fun when they're done outside. I often just do them out on the grass. Um, I've, I've laid down this, this uh, plastic just to give you an idea that you should cover uh, any of the surfaces if you're up on a deck or something like that. I, I'm sure the library would appreciate it. But if you're out on the grass, um, this is just latex paint and the grass will grow through it. You can mow the grass so you don't have to worry about the plastic unless you're worried your canvas can get dirty. So... Now this is the canvas, so at this point in time we have children with their little shirts on or, or any adults who are working with us, they've all got their little paint shirts on. Everybody has been taught to uh, put their blue brush back in the blue, their yellow brush back in the yellow, green into the green, etc. ad nauseum. Um, and then when they approach the canvas, they're going to find that some grommets have been put in 
the corners. I'm going to finish putting about five grommets in here. This is just one I put in this morning with its little reinforcement. And you can hang this up if you're doing a play about this song or about anything to do with Pauline Johnson or even any play that you figure you need a little boat in. Um, then you can hang this up and this will be your backdrop for your play. So it'll make a, a nice uh, visual for the audience. So this canvas is longer than this plastic, but as I said, this plastic is only here to uh, let you know that you should cover up things. So I'm gonna put a big board on this, or this will be like a sail. We're gonna be taken off. And there's very few days that aren't windy, so make sure you've got something on the ends. This one's a little bit grubby, but not bad. And each section gets its own water. So section one, we would probably put the water in the middle and as close to it as possible. If we only have a few children, we can fold this in half. And I just might do that. We fold it in half the long way and then that makes it easier to manage and less time is spent painting and children's attention span will be kept. Otherwise, it's going to seem like a lot of work. So if this is your first mural, fold your canvas in half. Next mur mural, you can use the other side. And when you're hanging it up to use for your plays or whatever you're going to do, you can either keep it as a half or you can just put the whole darn thing out. It'll look good. Kids, kids don't care what, if something's upside down. I don't care. Now, use my little anvil. So once we stabilize our work area, get it all flat then we get by this time the children are chomping at the bit to get painting so we review the song we talk about who's going to be the intro so they know that the intro doesn't have a sail and it doesn't have wind so you're going to have a few of them that say i want to be on the intro so okay introduction First part goes here. Who wants to be there? I do, I do, I do. You have all these enthusiastic little voices and possibly even some teenagers mixed in. It's always good to have a mixed group. You put your paint here. People have to be polite. They have to say, pass the blue, please. <laughs> it's, it really teaches a lot of good things. Okay. I'm not going to draw a hard and fast line between the intro and the body. I want them to flow on through. So first thing they're going to discuss is this is going to be on water. So the bottom part of the entire mural can be blue. So who wants to be the blue painter? in the intro. I do. Okay. You get to be blue painter. Who wants to be blue painter in the uh, body? I do. Okay. Good. You're on it. And who wants to be the conclusion one? I do. Okay. Now let's talk about it. Is it smooth water in the intro? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty smooth. How about in the, con in the body? Oh, it gets choppy. Yes. What does choppy water look like? Scary. Yes. And how about the conclusion? It's smoothing out again. Okay. So remember that when you're doing it. So let's get the blue guys all going. So uh, by this time, I've got the water for them where they dip there and clean their brushes. Uh, it's got soap in it in case you're wondering why it's got yellow. And there's the brushes. They can work from either side. It doesn't matter. And I've got a great big water here. That can be for the middle guys and for any wrecks. Okay. So now 
what we do is we discuss the other painters. Okay, the blue guys are all working. So now what's happening in the intro? Who remembers? So we go, west wind blow from your prairie nest, blow from the mountain, blow from the west. The sail is idle, sailor too. Wind from the west, we wait for you. So what does idle mean? Let's discuss some of these words. The sail is idle. So we haven't got the sail up yet. It's not doing its job. So it, we're just kind of getting it ready. Like about by this point in, in the canvas, somebody's kind of pulling the, the sail up out from the bottom of the boat and going to stick it in the hole for the sail and attach it to the sides and you'll have your little sail. Okay, so if the sail is idle, it's not doing anything at the beginning. So who wants to paint the canoe where the sail is idle? I do. Okay, so that's the second out of the three. A job for you. So what colors can you use? Because we don't have, when you have donated paint, you often don't have the colors that maybe you want. So please pick a color. What color is your canoe going to be? I want to have a green one. Okay. Here's our green one, so give it a shake. And then we would put the, we'll put three brushes in there anyways, in case somebody needs some green. And the canoe can get started. By the time the canoe is over here, it doesn't mean that there's two canoes, it just means we're moving through time. So by the time the canoe is, is over here near the body, you're starting to put the sail up. Who wants to do that? I do. Okay. So what color is your sail going to be? What colors do you have? Do you like yellow for a sail? Sure. Okay. So then the sail gets painted in a, and another little green boat gets started. Then we're into the uh, middle section. This is where the wind is really picking up. What color is your wind going to be? We've got lots of blue. What do you think of that? Sure, let's have blue. And that, so you have this big wind and you can discuss that. What does your wind look like? And you might have some drawing material there where the children can, or any of the others who are participating can draw what they think the wind is going to be. So who's going to do the wind? Me. Okay, so there's someone there making the wind. Who wants to do the canoe with the full sail really pushing the canoe and the, the guy's hanging on with maybe a little bit of a scared face. Who wants to do that? I do, I do. Okay, so there you go. You can have your canoe any color. It doesn't have to still be green. Okay, so there's the body. It's getting, and you've got, already got the uh, water guy making some big waves. Okay, now we've got the middle part is sort of a carry on from the intro part that I already sang and said. So this part is, I stowed the sail, unshipped the mast, I wooed you long, but my wooing's past. My paddle will lull you into rest, O oh, drowsy wind from the drowsy west. So this part is where the wind has died down again, and you're just slowly using your paddle. So make sure when you do your, your canoe part that you're paddling very gently and you've got a little smile on your face and the wind is maybe disappearing off into maybe the tail end of the wind could be showing. So we just finish up with it being very calm. And, uh, and then if I can, uh, if I can get a volunteer for the calm canoe. Yep, yep, I'll be the calm canoe guy. Okay, and you have to have the sail down and put away. Yep. So there you go. You can paint it whatever colors you have in your containers. And uh, all we need to do at the very end is make sure that we have a continuation of the water and the sky. So after you've done your canoes, there has to be water painted around the canoes. So everybody has to do that. You can ask your friend if you can paint on that side for a while because the water has to continue all the way through. You can ask that group if you can bring some clouds through and paint them. You can leave the white of the canvas for the clouds. So anything that's white, just leave the canvas showing through because we don't have, I think I have one white. <laughs> if you get some white donated, then you can actually paint the clouds. So that's pretty well it for your painting. And what I encourage you to do 
After you've painted a little bit, make sure your brushes are back in their containers. Stand up and look at each other's work and see if it's all joining together. Because as a community, we need to work together. Not only do we have to be careful we aren't bumping grandma or hurting Johnny, we have to work together to make it pleasing as one project. So that means compromising. Um, you're using red for the water. Well, that's okay, isn't it? Well, let's see, how can we transition red into blue? Ah, purple. Purple will take us into into the blue that's great okay so put your red down i'll put a little of my blue on top and we'll we'll eventually get to blue by going through purple so these little compromises are very important um i once did a a mural with a, a lot of children for halloween and it was really cute because uh johnny his his name was johnny was really working on a lot of bats on that one end and of course they're black and the little girls that were working next to Johnny were painting moons and pumpkins in yellows and oranges and Johnny's bats were kind of leaking into their stuff so once Johnny went up and he had to go to the bathroom they went and I didn't I didn't know they were doing this I, I missed it they scraped off all of his bats and and used rags and stuff got it and covered it with orange and yellow and Johnny came back from the bathroom and said, where's my bat? <laughs> so you have to be careful. Respect the other person's work, no matter if it is uh, not really working as far as you are thinking. Or it's not really artistic or something. Respect everybody's work. So that's about it. So you can imagine how beautiful your, your little mural will be. And then uh, the next day, you can actually flip this over. It might have a bit of a leak through from the paint, but you can flip it over and do something else. A whole other song. So that's basically it, except we'll do a little detail on how to do the grommets. Now, when we're doing grommets, uh, we have the male and the female of the grommet family. There's a mama and a papa. And we have the mortar and pestle, so when we're putting the, uh, we do a sandwich of material in between and the sandwich is there and then we pound with the little ball peen. But we're, we have to remember to go up on there, up on my anvil or it won't work. It'll bounce too much. So what we do first is I have to have a, ooh, don't need a rock. We have to have a little bit of a, see that reinforcement? I'm going to run and get a little piece of, of uh, canvas. I cut about 10 of those this morning when I was getting ready for this. And I need to go get one. I don't see any here, so I'll be right back. So I'm going to cut my little square. Doesn't matter if your canvas is a little bit dirty. You may as well use it up for these little scraps. Is, uh, you don't want your uh, grommet hole pulling through in the middle of a blizzard or a huge rainstorm and your flapping tarp allowing you to get wet or cold. So this will prevent that. This will strengthen the set of the grommet. So you make a little hole. You don't have to make it too big because it'll stretch because the canvas is uh, quite stretchy, actually. Now, and then you do the same for your little corner. So you make a little hole. And then you sometimes put some little extenders in there. And in here, that way you can slip it over the male part of the grommet a little easier. This is the big scissors that I used to use when I sewed teepees. It was a 
pretty handy. So what we do is we want to have the good side on the same side that this one's on. So I'm pretty sure I lined it up. The good side is there. And then this is the side that'll be against the wall when you're hanging it up. So we've got the side against the wall and the good side. So the mail goes through. You kind of stretch it on and stretch this one on. Then the female goes on like that. So again, we match together. The female is on the side of the little square patch. Then you set this down in that little curvy part. There's a little indentation. And you set it on the old railway piece, the railway tie piece. You get the pokey part of your grommet assembly kit. In there, you take the old ball peen hammer that your dad gave you and you give it some wax and then you check it. If it's got, if you can put your fingernail in there, you have to do some more. And I can put my fingernail in there. At this point in time, you can even straighten your canvas if you want, not that you need to. You can always cut that trim right to the circle. So now I'm going to do the little parts on the edges a little better. There. Let's see. There. There we go. We've got our grommet in. And now I'll be putting grommets all along the top. And I can put them all along the bottom as well on the long lengths. That way, if you're covering a canoe with this, once it's all painted, it'll be waterproof, which is awesome. Because when you paint it with the uh, outdoor paint, especially, or even the indoor paint, basically your canvas is all sealed and water can't get through. So you can use this as a ground sheet for camping. You can put your sleeping bag on top and uh, have this beautiful, beautiful picturesque uh, uh, mat to lay on. You can put it double, fold it double. The other thing you can do, again, is just hang it up as a windbreak when you're camping to uh, slow the wind so that you can have your fire and it's not just blowing all the heat away. You can dig down into the snow and hang this up around the edge and it'll uh, reflect the firelight back onto you. You can use it as a drama backdrop um, because it'll all be beautifully painted once you're done, which will be amazing. So there's many uses. Even if you have a, a truck and you're moving and you need to have a load covered, this is the thing to have. So if you learn how to do your grommets, they're, they're very easy to do. Again, you have your your male part and your female part. These are size four. And you buy a, a grommet. This is called a grommet machine. So I always call it a mortar pestle. This is called a size four as well. And uh, yeah, so you can have your own little tarp business. So there ends the mural painting session. I hope you uh, all uh, have a wonderful time painting murals with your librarians and, uh, and all your family. Mm -hmm.